briefly as you can because I want to try and get an idea of what sort of questions people want to put. I will do my best to be brief, but I also want to take the opportunity to ask uh, the question that I think is very important and, and close to heart. Um, Mr. Juncker started his intervention by saying that not everybody can be Jacques Delors. I think that is very true. I mean, there is a very important difference between... Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> there is a very important difference between Mr. Juncker and Mr. Delors, which is that Mr. Juncker has been... Uh, granted the post of, of president of the European Commission due to a uh, democratic innovation in the European elections. And I think that's very important because if you see what, what, it, what we have seen since the crisis, as you also said in your uh, introduction, um, there has been too much intergovernmentalism in, the bat in battling the crisis. There has been too much what Habermas calls executive federalism and not enough transnational uh, democracy. And the question is, is a stronger Europe, a more federal Europe possible without more transnational democracy? And I think that's a problem because, as uh, Mr. Davignon also said, there are some challenges for democracy nowadays. Uh, citizens are very worried about fundamentalist assaults. They are very worried about movements of intolerance in Germany. They are very worried about tax, tax rulings, tax evasion, and they have actually not much opportunity to bring these worries uh, to the forefront of, of European political debate. Every five years they can go vote at European elections, but as Mr. Davignon also said, the voter absenteeism is rather high, especially with, with young people. And also advancements in modern communication technologies kind of make our representative system of European democracy look a bit outdated. So my question would be, since your um, nomination as Commission President was the result of this democratic innovation, do you feel that you have kind of the obligation to be a champion for a renewal of democracy in the European Union? And um, how do you want to use this democratic legitimation you received from the European elections? And connected to that, if, if I can, um, what do, and I would be very interested in the answers of Monsieur uh, Davignon and Mr. Juncker, what opportu opportunities do you think that modern communication technologies can bring to improve uh, representative democracy in the European Union? And wouldn't the European Commission be in the right place to organize a debate and take the lead in a discussion about how we can actually update the democratic structure of the European Union uh, to the 21st century? long questions, if I can encourage some short answers, because I'm very keen to get an idea of what, what sort of, what are the concerns of everybody here this evening? I do think, I do think that uh, the way which was ours to um, become president of the commission and commissioners is uh, uh, a rather new one, and I'm uh, uh, strongly supporting the uh, way of trying to give more intensiveness to that way next time. I, I, I do think that the next European elections will be more in the mood of uh, uh, the last uh, European elections because I do think that this idea of having uh, lead candidates uh, was not shared in all the countries and not, was not shared by the the, larger, the, the largest number of European uh, citizens. I like it very much if people are saying we have been elected directly, but I'm, only, I'm the only one who knows it. Those who have elected me don't know it uh, at the same extent. I would like uh, European citizens to know next time that this is serious and when parties are presenting lead candidates that he will be really the one who will lead the European uh, uh, Commission. I will never deny those who are saying that I did it, but I'm, uh, I know what is... Uh, I, I know what is what, and I know how it um, uh, happened. We have this European Citizens Initiative, and we have to reflect on giving a touch of modernization to these European Citizens Initiatives. But this is a treaty matter. We cannot easily change treaties. I don't think that uh, it will be easy to change treaties in, uh, in, in the next coming months. But I would like the Commission to adopt a more fresh approach when it comes to these European citizens initiatives, encouraging them, asking uh, for, uh, uh, for that. Of course, new technologies are a helpful instrument to um, 
intensify the political dialogue between institutions and between European citizens, but the main point is not there. The point is that there is a, a, a widening gap between European citizens and uh, 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 European Commission and European Union and the political initiatives which are taken in Europe, and we have to, um, to close that gap. That's the reason why I was pleading a big Europe on, on big uh, issues and uh, having a, a, a more modest, timid European Union on, uh, uh, on smaller uh, issues. I do, really, I, I do think, I have to repeat myself, that we are not respectful enough when it comes to the principle of, of subsidiarity. Let local uh, authorities do what they can do best and let uh, regions do what they can do best and let's, as a European Union and as a European European Commission concentrate on the great uh, on the on the big and large uh, avenues leading to uh, to a better uh, future. Excellent. We've got a few minutes left. Could I get an idea of how many?